Hey, it's Dr. J. I'm back. Uh, before I go, I want to take two more for the road. Uh, these, this is a um, continuation of the algebraic uh, manipulation or the algebraic techniques of evaluating limits. Uh, I did this one in the previous video and it was a mess. Um, I did manage to get the right answer, um, but uh, before I take off, um, I want to make sure that I, I give this one its proper treatment. Um, so I'm going to do this one again. Um, hopefully I'll get the same result I got last time. Maybe not quite as messy. Uh, and then I got one more that, that you may not have seen before. All right, so we've seen this one before. Uh, we're talking about the uh, limits um, where you're dividing by zero. Uh, you should um, verify that it qualifies as one of the cases. Um, I will mention, and I briefly mentioned this, if this were a plus sign, when you plug in the six, you're going to get one fourth plus one fourth. So the numerator would not be zero. Um, and that would be case two. And you would get a free answer, which is DNE. So I don't know if I made that clear last time. But this time, it is definitely zero divided by zero. If, if you plug in the six, you'll get one fourth minus one fourth. So the numerator would be zero. And you'd get six minus six, which is zero over zero. This is what we call a case three indeterminate or indeterminate form. So I don't know. I don't know what's what's going to happen. All right. So let's go, actually, I do know because I did it already, but hopefully I'll do it a lot uh, cleaner this time. So we got the limit as X approaches six. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wait on the denominator. I did that last time. And we're going to simplify the numerator. So we're gonna combine this together. Uh, real quick, uh, algebra, you're going to multiply this one by 4, top and bottom. So that'll be 4 over 4x minus 8. And then you're going to multiply this one by x minus 2. This is, again, multiplying by a special form of 1. So that'll be 1 times x minus 2 over, again, 4x minus 8. All right, I'm still kind of waiting on the denominator here. I'll do that later. Uh, so this will be 4 over 4x minus 8. And then I've got a negative 1. Yeah, so this is like, I like to combine this together here and just put it up top like this. And then this negative 1 will distribute. So you're going to get negative x plus 2 over 4x minus 8. I go ahead and combine that. So that's the limit as x goes to 6 of negative x plus 6 over 4x minus 8. So again, just very quickly, negative x and then positive 4 and positive 2 will become positive 6. All right, now here's what I did last time, and I, I did this part correctly, but I just had some of the numbers written down funky. I changed this into old school division. Yeah, so this division bar here, right here, Instead of writing it as a fraction and then another fraction, I just go back to old school division. I like to put an invisible 1 here. It's, it's x minus 6 over 1. Right. It was there the whole time. I'm just making the invisible 1 visible. 
Um, I'm going to factor out a negative 1 from the negative x plus 6. I'm going to factor that out. I could factor the bottom, but it doesn't help the problem, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Then I'm going to flip this and multiply 1 over x minus 6. I could put parentheses around it if it makes it look nicer. It's up to you. And there we go. We cancel the x minus 6s. I feel a lot better about this one now. So this is the limit as x approaches 6 of negative 1 over 4x minus 8. All right. So that is the cleaner version of the simplification. All right. In the last part, I had made all sorts of sign errors. I'd written x plus 6, and I'd written x 4x plus 8. and I, I don't know. I was tired. It was the very end of the video, so no excuse. Uh, so now notice that you can plug in 6. It does not cause division by 0. So it's going to be negative 1 over 4 times 6 minus 8. Negative 1 over 24 minus 8. And I do get the same result that I got last time. I, I either got lucky or <laughs> I managed to resolve my mistake. But there it is. Nice and clean, step-by-step -step, uh, redo of uh, one of the examples from the previous video. All right. So I feel a lot better now. I think if I do one more, um, then I can uh, put this uh, up on YouTube and uh, we'll be done with with this section. We'll move on to uh, the next section shortly. All right. Um, so, I mean, the idea behind both of these uh, techniques is that you're multiplying by one. Uh, these are what are called complex fractions. They have, you know, fractions within fractions. And your goal is to get rid of the denominator so that you can ultimately plug in the value. All right, you do need to verify, or you should verify that it is in fact zero over zero. Otherwise, these techniques are—I um, wouldn't say they don't work. They, the steps would still work, but um, they would not be as useful they, or um, as necessary. So, the second one I want to try. is a radical function. And the limit as x approaches 0 this time. It's a similar type of technique. Uh, you should verify that it's 0 over 0. So again, the limit as we're approaching 0, well, the denominator is clearly going to be 0. That's easy. Check. Um, and then a real quick check of the numerator. If you plug in 0, that would be the square root of 81 minus 9, which is also 0. Yeah, check. So it's 0 over 0. Square root of 81 is clearly 9, and 9 minus 9 is clearly 0. And again, I just, before we put this to rest, if this had been a plus sign, then the numerator would not be 0. Yeah, it'd be 9 plus 9, which would be 18, and I wouldn't have to do all of this work. Um, it would just be a non-existent, does not exist limit. Right? It's an asymptote, case number 2. All right, this is case number 3. This is the 0 over 0 case. So our goal is to resolve this issue with uh, zero in the denominator, and then hopefully evaluate the limit algebraically. All right. So let's get right into it. Uh, with this one, I'm going to start by identifying the conjugate. So the conjugate of, you know, radical A minus B is radical A plus B. Yeah, it's a, an, we call this an irrational conjugate. It's, a, it's an irrational number with an opposite sign in the middle. 
so this is your a this is your b so i'm going to multiply by the square root of 2x plus 81 plus 9 and i'm going to do it on the top and the bottom All right, that's how you do that. Uh, the similar type of thing works with complex numbers, but we're not using complex numbers at this time, or possibly ever. They, they don't really appear in a business calculus course. All right, so I'm going to just do that right away before I even get into it. So this is going to be equal to the limit as x goes to 0. Now watch what happens. Again, I did one of these or similar one earlier. In the bottom, don't do anything. Just leave the bottom alone. This is sort of the patient technique. You just have to wait and let this sort of resolve itself. Your goal is that this X will end up canceling out. Let's see if that happens. Um, last time I didn't have enough room to write everything down when I did this, but I think I might have enough room to write the entire top. So. Square root times the square root is the square root squared. Right. If you want, you can cancel that out now. I'm just going to wait. Then you have the square root times positive 9. So that's positive 9 times the square root. Then you have the same square root times negative 9. So negative 9 times the square root. This is the step that I did not show uh, in a similar example. And then I have negative 9 times positive 9, which is negative 81. So I have the limit as x goes to 0. x approaches 0. I'm going to cancel the square root and the square. 2x plus 81. I could put that in parentheses, but I don't need it. I'm going to cancel the positive 9 square root 2x plus 81. And the negative 9, 2x plus 81. I almost lost my 81 there. Yeah. Doesn't, they're going to cancel out anyway. So those are gone. And then I just have my negative 81. So my patience has paid off. That's why I didn't do anything to the bottom. I was hoping that I could get some more canceling. And sure enough, I get the 81 and the negative 81 cancel. So I get the limit as x approaches 0 of 2x over x times the square root of 2x plus 81 plus 9. And this is the grand finale. The X's are canceling. I, I should point something out, you know, because I, I teach a lot of algebra, even in a calculus course. I just, it's sort of in my nature. When I say cancel, there are several different types of canceling. This is called inverse canceling. This is inverse operations that cancel each other out. Yeah, I use the word cancel. All right, they sort of undo each other. Right. Notice when you do an inverse operation canceling, it's a square root and a square. The only thing that actually cancels is the operation. So the square root and the square cancel out, but you are left with the radicand or the, the argument of that function. So it's 2x plus 81, it comes down here. Right. That's one type of canceling. Another type of canceling, and again, we call all of these things canceling, even though they're, they're all slightly different types of canceling. This is called additive canceling. Yeah, additive canceling is where you have a positive and a negative. They're canceling additively, right? Oppositely is another way to think about it. So these become zero. Yeah. So I don't usually write zero, but these two things become the number zero. Yeah. Similarly here, positive 81 and negative 81. That's another form of additive or opposite canceling. Yeah. Opposites cancel each other out. Right. So again, this becomes technically a zero here. Right. I'm not going to write it, but here it would be 2x plus zero. There's no need to write that in a calculus course. 
And then the final type of canceling that I'm doing here is multiplicative canceling. Yeah. Also known as dividing. Yeah. Multiplicative inverse. Yeah. Or reciprocal. There's lots of different names for it. In other words, you are dividing a number by itself. And so that becomes one. And again, I'm not going to write it, but technically this then becomes two times one. Yeah. And again, we don't write that. We just write two. So I just want to make that very clear throughout this course. I will often use the word cancel. And there are lots of different um, types of canceling. I always thought it would be neat, you know, I don't know if you've heard a, you know, language, some languages have many different words. I'm not going to get into a linguistics discussion here because I probably would get in over my head. <laughs> I'm a mathematician after all, but, you know, I have heard <laughs> that there are languages that have, you know, five different words for love or 20 different ways to say snow or, you know, something like that, depending on the culture and the, the geography of where these uh, people are located. Um, you know, the language gets very rich and has lots of different ways to describe things. Well, in mathematics, using the English language, when I say cancel, we don't really have five different words for the different types of canceling. I could describe them to you, but I always thought it'd be neat. You know, I haven't really put a lot of effort into it, but to just make a different word for this type of canceling as opposed to the word for this type of canceling. I don't know how much buy-in I would get from the community on that. Um, you know, as of the filming of this video in 2024, uh, we just called them all canceling, but they're different types of canceling. You know, they don't all mean the same thing. All right, so now I can go ahead and plug in the zero. I'm going to skip it because I'm running out of room here, but when you plug in zero here, this becomes zero, so you're just going to get the square root of 81. So that's going to be 9 plus 9. Yeah, and so that's going to be uh, 2 over 9 plus 9, which is 2 over 18 which is one over nine or one ninth. And there we go. That is the end of this section on algebraic manipulation. Okay, well, um, I'm going to um, go now. <laughs> but until we uh, see each other again, um, uh, Dr. Jordan, I'll see you next time on the Internet.